Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Strength Hammer podcast. I am Chuck. Today, I have Matt Hayward. You do. Okay. Uh, Dave, David Roke, Woke Roke. Hello. With a D and D background on, and and the beholder is clearly eating my couch. Of course, because <laughs> your couch is a person and not a general background that can be ignored by a computer. Oh, like it's your a couch. Mimic. Your couch is eating that person. <laughs> <laughs> we also have yeah. uh, We also have Neil Larocca. You can find me at uh, at Jimbo Nine Jimbo. All right, take care, everybody. Good episode, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah happy fat tuesday guys um if you celebrate that if you don't celebrate that happy fat tuesday i don't care about your beliefs <laughs> i just care about mine this is my world now, if you don't it. celebrate that then if you don't celebrate that then i wish you a sad fat tuesday <laughs> <laughs> so today on the podcast we're going to talk about soulbound uh, the four of us got our first session in together. Um, wasn't my first, but uh, Matt, Dave, and Neil, I believe that was your first. Yeah, mm-hmm. this was. Since everyone is showing their book. <laughs> Huzzah! Here's my book. Uh, it's <laughs> 10 feet away from me, but I don't feel like getting up. But yeah, we got through our first session. So today we're going to do our little thoughts on our session, I guess, the game as we understand it basically so far. Um, I really enjoy the game, uh, not to go into it too much, but uh, just to give a quick shout out. I do play fairly regularly over on uh, Mr. Mephisto's channel uh, over on YouTube, so check it out. I play with uh, Haywo, uh, Vince and Tom from Warhammer Weekly, and uh, Mr. Mep is the game master. So I really enjoy the game system. Super fun, super easy, and set in the world I love. So that's most of my review of it. We'll, we'll see what you guys feel after that. But first... Well, I would, I would like to ask you real quick. Sure. How do you feel about being kicked out of that game for inappropriate content? I've not been kicked out of that game. Are you Are you in the game? The Soulbound game? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in it. I my character's on a uh, my character decided to leave the party based upon lore reasons, and is gone mm-hmm. for a little bit, but she's coming mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. Some triple okay. X lore reasons. How, yeah. How long? <laughs> what was the last time they called you? What was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're good. They'll call me. They'll let me know. <laughs> Listen, it's it's not a problem. They'll they'll they, they need their witch elf. I'll be I'll be back. Not a problem. <laughs> Everything's fine. Nothing happened in Anvil Guard. It's fine. <laughs> what what happens in Anvil Guard stays in Anvil Guard. Correct. Like your witch elf. <laughs> no. <laughs> fine. <laughs> you know what? If if she disappears on that campaign, well, she's going to be the villain in our campaign because she's coming after you guys. <laughs> sure we already blew her up. No, 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 no. That's right. Yeah. You blew off it's a future <laughs> meal for my eel. That's, uh... I, I, I lasered her right through the stomach. <laughs> no, you did that to a hag queen. <laughs> no, no, no. I hit the hag queen with my hammer. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah. spoilers ahead. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. If you're listening on podcast or on YouTube, uh, I guess get this out of the way now. Make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, ring the bell, uh, comment. And if you don't like anything that you hear tonight, make sure you go over to AOS Coach's latest video and tell him there. Perfect. Um, So, yeah, uh, typical start. Um, Let's do uh, some fitness and hobby chat real quick, guys. Uh, Dave, why don't you... uh, you tell us what's going on with your fitness and your hobby right now. Ooh, uh, fitness has been uh, a little sparse. Although today I did have to deal with uh, the ends of snowfall, um, so got to get out there do some shoveling. And thankfully, I have a functional snowblower, so that helped. Uh, and fitness. actually, after we record, <laughs> well, hey, this you have hey, a my my watch tells me I did a workout. So <laughs> you, we... it's like it's like turning on a treadmill and just watching it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You have a pretty big driveway. I remember you showed us the video the last big snow we had oh, a yeah. few weeks ago. It was like, what, 87 steps yeah. to the back or something ridiculous? It, it was it was like 55 full paces, so it's it's one <laughs> hell of a driveway. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, after we finish recording tonight, I am hitting the treadmill tonight. So, um, what did, so that's, that's what the did, uh, what did it do fitness to you? plan. 
Why would you hit it? Would you uh, hit it? <laughs> it mocked me for using the snowblower. So. <laughs> Stole touch, some touch the doll where the, where, where, the, where the treadmill touched you, Dave. Yep. <laughs> the treadmill owes me money, so I'm going to... Uh, but uh, And, and hobby-wise, actually, um, I've spent some time with my nearly nine-year-old uh, building Chaos Warriors for his army, uh, and he has completely <laughs> built his first box of models, getting to the point where not only was he cutting out the pieces off the sprue, he was cleaning them off the sprue, uh, and then gluing entirely himself. So uh, that's very exciting. He's uh, finishing up a a D&D Manticore, uh, because we got the little uh, paint night kit from the local hobby shop. And uh, when he's done with that, he can start uh, building his start collecting uh, Slaves to Darkness box. So now, I've been working with him on some hobby stuff. I can't recall. Do you have the old Slaves to Darkness start collecting or the new one? Just the new one. Okay, you're. He's going right in the deep end there with that. <laughs> yeah, he's he's very excited about the Carcadrac. That's that's uh, job number one for him. Fair enough. Neil, uh, what about you? What's your hobby? What's your fitness? Uh, fitness wise, I've started karate with my kids, so we're working on some blocks here. You know, get those blocks he's getting out, his ass kicked in. by <laughs> yeah, so the young ones. Yeah, my my seven year old can still take me out pretty easy. Um, yeah, I could before the karate too, but uh, <laughs> no. But uh, we we actually had uh, a class last week that I almost died in. Uh, we we're doing bag work. So it was like, uh, you, you go, you punch and kick a bag for a minute, 30 seconds rest, then you punch and kick a bag for a minute, 30 seconds rest. And uh, by the time uh, 15 minutes uh, was up, it wasn't all that, but uh, my heart was about to beat out of my chest. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and then I had to do a whole other class after that. So definitely getting good workouts out of it. Um, Hobby-wise, I am drilling through 30 Narmadi Namardi, Namardi. There we go. go. Namardi thralls um, for um, for my daughter. She's helping a little bit. She's helped a little bit on the bases. She did the middle on the swords and stuff. But for the most part, um, I've kind of realized that uh, my daughter at uh, eight years old is not going to slog through thirty models. <laughs> so I'm just kind of <laughs> yeah. plowing through these uh, uh, for her and just let her kind of help out where she wants to help out. Um, but I should have those done either tonight. Or by tomorrow is yeah. the hope. So I've been enjoying. They're coming out really nice because you keep sharing those, uh, your progress of those in our little chat, and their uh, scheme looks really good. Nice simple paint job. I haven't painted elves in a long time, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. So yeah, there we go. Um, the tan yeah. boys put those yeah. doors back in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's skin skin's no good. So every skin color I do is Reichland flesh shade and that's <laughs> that's what you're going to get. Apparently you can you can have any skin color you want as long as it's Reichland flesh shade. So let me let me ask you this, are you excited for uh Broken Realms tech list? Are you are you going to finally jump in on the uh high elves once more? Nope. <laughs> not because uh you know i don't it's just not 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 on the hobby radar at the moment at all um we're gonna do this we're gonna keep uh plowing away on uh nurgle a little bit although i have most of that painted i am picking up um gut rot spume so that i'm not actually using just a nurgle base <laughs> um, <laughs> a base of base of nurglings um around the board uh it was very themey um when i played dave there so um we're gonna actually get that guy and we'll paint him up and i might have to paint up that second um what do they call him the guy on the bug the blight lord on the bug oh uh, pascal blight lord I mean, no that's no, 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 no. you're talking about, about the um, lord of <laughs> afflictions afflictions there it is. There it is. Well done. Um, I've got one painted already. I might put another one into my list. Just oh, so uh, good. Try to try and take out some more of that. Uh, oh, good, yeah. <laughs> that trash heap that's been <laughs> in that list. I keep pr pruning it. Little by little. Yeah, just um, trim it up. Trim so, <laughs> and it seems to give me the same results. <laughs> what I do. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's what's on the hobby dock. And then after that, I think... Uh, if I do a new army, it's probably going to be Stormcast at some point. So oh, eh, I might really? I might finish my Zinch. Really? Might finish my Zinch. Might do a little Stormcast. We'll see how it goes. So. Well, I mean, you still got time. This looks to be a mm -hmm. slow year for anything happening. So no need to rush anything, right? I, would, I don't know if I would say that. We have a reveal show of our own this Saturday. 
we do. Neil, I think you Neil, I think you, you should wait till Stigmar pushes that uh release another oh. chamber button. I thought you no, meant, I thought you meant no, no, and then I like dive in. I thought you meant us as like our channel, like Strength Hammers do. No, us as in the no, Age not. of Sigmar community. Yeah. Gaslighting me over here. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a full AOS reveal show this night. I'm 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 curious what's gonna be shown. Obviously the title's is saying maybe Grave Lords, maybe Lumineth Realm Lords, so who knows? Yeah, that's weird because it is it it's titled what? Masters of the Realm or Lords, some of, Lords the realm. of the Realm? I think uh, if I if I was a betting man, I'm getting all the guessing all the uh, the shadowy pictures that mm -hmm. we saw before. We're probably going to see what those look like. Yeah, uh, so, so yeah, and they look guess. like yeah, <clears throat> looks like vampire type stuff. But you know, um, Broken Realms Techless has Lumineth in it, so maybe we'll see some Lumineth stuff because there's <laughs> yeah, there's still a lot to be seen. So, but I'm hoping we see lots more Warhammer quests. But we'll save all that talk for the big M Power Hour coming on in a couple weeks. Uh, make sure you tune into that same same bat time, same bat channel. Um, but Matt, what's your fitness and what's your hobby like? Uh, fitness has um, been a little snaggy with all the snow. Uh, you know, last month I was trying to push through some back issues and then we just keep getting more and more snow. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, my back hurts, but also an adult. Go shovel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now I can't sit or stand. So, <laughs> did you see? Did you see? Tomorrow's going to be okay for us out here in Western PA, yeah. but uh, Thursday, Wednesday, late night into Thursday and into Friday, uh, up to eleven inches of snow. You ready for that? Uh, well, I mean, I that's not what I heard on my side. So okay. Well, I also hopefully, yeah, hopefully that's just you, your crazy mountain kind. <laughs> yeah, I live, I live at the base of a mountain, so I get more than that. So I hope it's not as much for you. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking for two to four inches. Okay. Which which is fine. That's what she said. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I mean, they, should, they can't complain about that. <laughs> they can't feel anything to complain about. So. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's not even there. <laughs> All right. uh, but yeah, yeah, so as far as hobby goes, still been slugging along on uh, Lumineth. Um, I started to make some headway. I uh, been still building <laughs> stupid um, Warcry uh, Sylvaneth boxes that I bought. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I literally bought two boxes, and I have like a third of an army now. Like, oh yeah, that, those boxes were great <laughs> values, even though they cost a little more. Yeah, and um, so like I said, I mean, uh, we still have a bunch of dryads and. I don't know, man. I think it's a super cool army, and yeah. uh, I don't care if it's not competitive. It's it is certainly frustrating as all hell to play against. So I'm looking forward to put that down <laughs> on the table. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've been getting the urge to add a little bit more to mine as well. It's it it is. It's just cool to. Put, it's one of those armies like it is like Lumineth for me, where it's just cool to put out. But <clears throat> Lumineth also are really fun to play. So yeah. there's a bonus there. But well, I was I've been working on the I've been working on the um Karnathi hunters mm -hmm. and what what I weapon did you with? what weapon load out uh, well so we already had we already have i think six or nine bows and i think we have six scythes so i decided to go with six great swords oh, there you go um, oh. and um that way I'll, I'll feel them in different ways and see which one i like and then i'll do another i'll probably get another six of of whatever one I ended up liking the most. Um, I, I swear to God, this is like the one army that takes longer to build than it does to paint if you're using contrast. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. it's Yeah, I mean, I dry brush mine, and I could bust out that army in a day if I really wanted to. Except for Larry, <laughs> she's a little different. but Yeah, I'm tempted. I, I think about different paint schemes and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I don't know which way I want to go. Like, do I want to just be done? Yes. And just go get like fill it with wildwood and just be done. Or do I want to try and actually make it look nice? Do something like I, I don't even know. But hey, I mean, you can dry brush. That is a long good effect. Really good effect. That is a long, long way from here to there. I still have uh, my luminous to paint, and then I have to start started on the uh, slaves of darkness. Fight club still has some some custodes to paint. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you have more luminous coming too, so don't. 
don't get too far ahead of yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, you got so okay. much. It's you. You are in trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, I already have two Lumineth armies to paint with. Uh, since I'm going with like full non like generic non temple army, then I have the Stone Temple, and then I'm gonna have yeah, this Wind Temple. Yeah, Wind Temple's coming out. Whole Wind Temple army to build and paint. You you called go. the Stone Temple Pilots. Oh my dear. <laughs> 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 nice. Neil, nice. slap yourself for that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Nice. Well, um, as for me, my fitness currently in preparation mode for the CrossFit Open, which is happening mid March. I don't know, it's twenty five days or something like that. Mm. Um so trying to really focus in on that to just do well. Not that I'm gonna be anywhere near the top but you know just kind of want to place better than i did last year against myself um as far as hobby goes i did pick up some hobby uh we had matt uh you and i and then a bunch of uh mutual friends um who don't play warhammer sadly yet um had a hobby day where everyone just kind of did their hobby whether it was crocheting or just playing video games or building gundams and I picked up some Knight Shadow Stalkers, uh, and then Matt surprised me with a beautiful p- uh, piece uh, that he spent way too much on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe Gamak G H A M A K is the sculptor, and you can buy him off Etsy. But it's a it's a female Kane statue slash avatar, and it's right now it's sitting on my desk. It's it's going to be painted up when I think of how exactly I want to paint it up and where I want to put it. So I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you again for that, Matt. Oh, of course. Um, Can we see what you do with it? Yeah, and that officially means he has a backlog. I do. Yep. Let it be I do said. Have a backlog. <laughs> I have ten models, two two technically two units, so that's a backlog. Everything's built, um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm gonna have more of a backlog coming this weekend because I have pre-ordered the Daughters of Cain Battle Tome, limited edition, of course. Um, the Slanesh Battle Tome. Uh, the Daughters of Cain Endless Spells and the Daughters of Cain Dice. Uh, I'm waiting. I will pick up Sigvald probably next. Um, but not super stressed about because my Slanesh scheme is very in-depth. It's very difficult, so I'm not looking to rush it, but I want to get Sigvald because if you're playing Slanesh and you don't play Sigvald, then just throw the army away. <laughs> like, I don't want to say. Are it's, you, like, it's, uh, it's one of the best models in the game. So Are you going to paint him with or without pants? Oh, without. He's yeah, he's clapping in the wind. Yeah, I'm excited. Full on assless chaps. That's that's how I want it. I fart in your general direction. <laughs> yeah, it's actually. It, I, I will like, sure, like whatever. Um, preference on that, but I had to laugh because Vince Venturella put up. He got one early to paint, as did a bunch of other amazing artists, and he painted, I think, leather pants on Sigvald. And the first comment was someone going, "Why? Why is why is he wearing pants?" I was just like, they missed this beautiful model, this amazing, like, non-metallic metal synth wave scheme on, like, the abs. Just to look at, like, the thing that probably took Vince the least amount of time is, like, I'm going to put leather pants on instead of skin. Like, <laughs> if you're listening to this for whatever reason, fuck yourself. I don't know. Welcome <laughs> to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like, get over yourself. That doesn't matter. Um, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. If you're listening, Chuck's call out corner. Mind you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, don't worry. Call out corner's next. Um, not for me, though. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, really looking forward to that. Um, it, it should be coming out here soon, but um, I think page... Between page 14 and 16. It might be... I'm thinking 15. might be. There's a there's going to be a, a really good lore piece. Um okay. I hope everyone enjoys it. I'm very excited yeah. for it. Uh, no one reads that stuff. I know. But they, well, they will because I'm going to blast out as soon as I get my copy of the book. Um, uh, maybe sooner. Um, some kind reviewers um, uh, gave me a heads up on it, so I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm holding it in. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, next month too, you will have our full review of the Daughters of Cain book, and we might touch upon the Slanesh book as well. Um, there's some great reviews going out right now, just to give everyone a heads up, so uh, the Just Just Saying podcast, um, uh, the Face Hammer review, uh, Doug from 2 Plus Tough uh, put up a, a, 
a, a really nice take on a review. He reviews things based upon does this army fit how it should play type thing, based upon his reading of the rules. Um, I'm sure Warhammer Weekly is going to do theirs this week. Um, and also uh, Tyler Mangle Mangle Miniature is going to put up his doc uh, Battle Tome review and he usually focuses on lore as well so between all those sorry hit my mic uh, you should be able to get all the lore and uh, and rules reviews you could possibly hope for outside that for my hobby as you can probably tell if you're watching this video I'm in a new space I'm upstairs I did get a new camera got this nice new mic stand and you, you only saw that if you're on the uh, the video, uh, but you'll also <laughs> notice that my video is not the best because I'm also on a worse PC upstairs. But I'm surrounded by high elf art. Got my wife next to me. Sometimes my cat Rose will sit up here, and I'm very comfy. So if my video looks choppy, sorry, it'll get fixed when I get my new PC. Hopefully here in a couple months. Uh, but hopefully the audio is good. I think I got that situation fixed. So, and if you're sitting and watching this video and seriously watching this video of four guys heads talking about Warhammer with nothing else just, just thank you like subscribe <laughs> hit play just minimize that window and find something else to look at because you can do better I promise you <laughs> nope. Nope. you can't speak for yourself Chuck jeez ah, okay alright so next we have a new segment uh, this is going to be a segment brought to you by our special sponsor, Matt. Our special sponsor. Do you have a, a commercial for them? Uh, special sponsor or just regular sponsor? Uh, it's regular. He's not paid us yet, so he's not special. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's true. fresh for hire. He's just, okay. Minnie's not painted. Make Minnie's painted. Rush for hire. Get you some. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Sean. That's right. T-ball season here. No <laughs> shout-outs, no money, no nothing. T-ball. <laughs> I want to T-ball and I bunt it. Yeah, he's bunting T-ball. There you go. Oh, man. That's that's why my video is crappy. I can't afford a new PC without the sponsorship money, Sean. I mean... <laughs> oh, well. But the new segment is called... Well, working title. We can always change it. Neil's Call-Out Corner. Mm. I don't know. We could call that. We could call it Neil's Book of Grudges. Ooh, I like that. I mean, you are a dwarf player right now. Uh, <laughs> so, true. so we'll we'll play. I'm a like full convert right now. Tell you what, <laughs> in the comments below of the YouTube video, let us know what this segment should be called after you hear it. So, Neil, would you like to explain what this comment is, how it came to be, and just dive right into it? Um, it came to be out of um, just just basic rage. At a member of this podcast, um, he's uh, I don't know, lower. <laughs> he's down here um, because he has not picked up a paintbrush in God knows how long. So uh, this uh, segment of Neil's Call Out Corner is calling out Dave Roke for his uh, just embarrassing <laughs> amount of hobby that he's he's accomplished in the last I don't know how many months. It is it's shameful. Um, <laughs> And really, may God have mercy on your soul. So, I am calling you out, Dave. I know when your birthday is. It is late March. <laughs> All right. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call you out. I want, I want two minimum sized units, fully painted. <laughs> two, two hundred two. knoblars. <laughs> two, two, it that. may be Done. 200 knoblars. I don't know. But I want two fully painted units by the next time we podcast, which should be probably around what? Like um, mid to late March? A month from now. So we're, we're on a regular buy schedule. your birthday. Thanks for keeping up to us. All right. Buy your birthday. <laughs> um, two, at least two minimum size units. You've got a little, at least two minimum size units. Or if, if it is not done, you will be publicly shamed. I will, I will write something out if I have to. I will go on a five-minute <laughs> diatribe on this podcast about why you suck oh. so much, Dave. Uh, <laughs> so and, I want the, the paint. Neil, no, just, now, it, at it, the end of the diatribe, you have to say, brush for hire. No, here's, here's the best brush part. Brush for hire. It won't be on this podcast. It'll be its own video with me and Neil. <laughs> and, we, and, and I'm just going to let him lay into you. And I'm just going to be like the hype guy in the background. Be like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. the background of, like, a hip-hop song. That's all I'm going to be doing. Right. 
Some in fact, we should play a little hip hop behind while, while I do it because oh, I, I don't yeah. think there's any chance that Dave's getting this that's done. That's bad so. enough. That's true. That's true. <laughs> there's, there's no you way don't it's even have to say anything. Just play hip hop oh, music, yeah. and, and that will be torture. I don't care. So. It's nice that you're you're helping the kid, you know, put some models together. It doesn't count. I want to see I, I paint did. on models, Dave. <laughs> I did get a game in with Tommy too. We we played a game, dinosaurs versus dinosaurs. So there you go. Uh, Is, was there paint on those uh, on uh, on all the models that were played? Uh, he chose to use my skink star seer, so no. <laughs> so okay. maybe, yeah, maybe well. the star seer will have to be one of my minimum. Did you use croak units? Did he use croak or did you use croak? He chose croak. Wow. And what an ass. Croak croak is nasty. You should uh, yeah. you should not let you have him, fun with that, Dave? him have dessert or at all anything. <laughs> well, I, I, now that said, I, I used the, the skink star priest and the skink priest and um, these abilities that I've never tried to use before. I tell you what, you can make a nasty skink focused <laughs> army with that. Mm -hmm. I know Neil, you've you've only seen my Saurus focus where I'm reducing damage. Um, but a skink focused army can be really nasty. To be fair, it's it's not the skinks uh, or, or the source that I'm worried about. Really, it's the uh, it's Lord Croak. Um, <laughs> he's was particularly the issue vicious. Games. Yes, yes. You know, if yes, you picked up a uh, Luminath army, that wouldn't really be too much of a problem. <laughs> oh yeah, you solve Croak pretty quickly. There you go, Neil. Yeah. If. Uh, also, if you guys are listening, um, anybody from Ren4 is, is out there listening to the podcast, uh, we will be bringing a little, uh, some call-outs out to Ren4 as well. So we're going we're gonna to be making this, this call-out thing a little bit oh. constructive. Um, Don't worry. We're going to try gonna, and... We're going to branch out. We're going to include Ligonier Legion Club and the Steel City Sigma guys. And then uh, <laughs> as we get more and more comfortable and bold, and, and maybe as more people subscribe and follow, we'll branch out to the community at large, and we'll, we'll, we'll start some we'll start yeah. some shit. We'll start some yeah. uh, some <laughs> social that. media fights. So watch out! Watch so we're, out! We're, we're gonna get some some hobby done here. This is, we had a full year of just just nonsense, just nobody doing anything. So we're gonna we're gonna have what? people calling no, each other out. Nobody we're gonna be doing deadlines. Nobody. Oh, all right. Don't call it a Not comeback. I've, I've been here for. Yeah, we're we're. Ta I'm talking. I'm talking the wide ranging community here. We oh. were. You no, know. Neil. Neil's talking about the rogue <laughs> household. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm just talking about Dave. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just Dave. Every call out Dave. All right. Well, to um, before we shift to the main slot subject topic i tried to combine those words poorly uh of the night uh i want to i want to boost morale a little bit here since we just tore dave down i want to boost up a, a club member um uh cole uh from the ligonier legion which we should have him back on the show here soon um he, yeah, mr nola yeah uh so i kept calling out that he should play i deepkin and we had a game where he played my i deepkin now he is the proud owner of a bunch of i deepkin <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, kudos to you for choosing a stalwart army that's got some uh, good. Mm. It's always kind of had good rules. It's just in a weird place. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to him getting down the table because uh, I guess this kind of ties into hobby. Uh, I know Matt, you and I are going to it. There's going to be there's a new location. It's not actually a store. It's a Warhammer Club in Coriopolis or Periopolis, Pennsylvania, out near Pittsburgh. Um, Coriopolis. Coriopolis. Called Fabricators <clears throat> Forge. And there's going to be uh, uh, tournaments there. Enough, there's enough space that we're all going to be good and spread out. So I know Matt, you and I are going. Um, but also, I think the four of us are going to try to have a hobby day here in the next month or so. Because, uh, Neil, you owe mm -hmm. us some... Uh, maybe Dave, you might you might owe Matt some. But Dave, um, owes, Dave owes me some cookies. And Neil owes yep. me some cookies. Yeah, we... Um, are, are you guys sold out? Should we should we plug the Girl Scouts of America Girl Scout cookies for your daughters? <laughs> like, we're, no, we're, we're sold out. We're good. Dave, you good? <laughs> I I have no idea. Emma like met and destroyed her goal, so okay. we're good. All right, I was gonna say because if not, yeah. we'll throw a it link will, in the description. <laughs> we, we, we don't need to push anywhere. that crack rock. <laughs> okay, all right, we're good. I mean, I'm really looking forward to um, seeing you guys again and get some casual games in. Uh, with the new Daughters of Cain book and crushing you guys because, oh boy, <laughs> it's really hard not to talk about it right now. But today we talk about Soulbound. So a couple weeks ago we had our first session and we're playing, I think the goal is what, once a month? Kind of like as I get the story written. I know you guys aren't pushing me, so I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it was a really fun time uh, playing a little session. 
So why don't we go around first and kind of just uh, well here I'll set this I'll set the stage of where where we started and then we'll go around and you guys can explain your characters and then um, after that the three of you can talk about the story and I'll pipe in where we need to. Uh, so I'm starting the story for these three gentlemen right here. Uh, at the fall of Animal Guard, so in the morning when the fog rolls in and Marathi decides to take the city, that's when these guys clued in, and that's when they got pushed together. Uh, kind of like an emergency soulbound happened um, because they are tasked with getting a message to the Order of Azir about uh, Animal Guard's fall and Marathi's deception. Um, so yeah, uh, it, things started off hot and heavy, uh, and. But there's still lots of humor because it's, you know, a tabletop RPG. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Matt, why don't you start? Tell us about your character. And uh... Uh, Well, my uh, I went with a uh, an elder mage who uh, never really had the call to adventure, but he was just a, you know, had some decent talent with, with the, the winds of magic, as it were. Um, he's... Uh, he was found in... I always bounce back and forth every time I look at my character sheet. I go, oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, no. Ugu so he's somewhere Shaish. either <laughs> Ulgu or Shaish, whichever one is cooler at the time. Whichever one the... Um, I forget what spell lore he has. I can look up what spell lore and that will tell me which one he is. But um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was discovered as a, uh, as a child out in the middle of that realm. Uh, by uh, by by a stormcast, and uh, it was a it was a stormcast hunter or vanguard hunter. Uh, she found him all the way out there, all by himself. There was nobody around, um, and so she was already heading back to um, Anvil Guard. So she decided that she was going to take me along with her. Um, she didn't make it all the way, so I was passed from basically like Stormcast Troop to Stormcast Troop, uh, and I eventually made my way. It's like, you guys, uh, have you ever seen the uh, ending of, uh, was it uh, Endgame for Avengers, where they're passing the gauntlet around? Yeah. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> um, so he didn't st- spend a long time in the orphanage. A um, One of the wizards in the city, uh, you know, kind of saw his abilities pretty early, and... Um, uh, adopted him, um, and they he he trained him through his adulthood and everything. And um, you know, whenever my, my character, uh, whose name is uh, Luthus, he, uh, he he reached you know probably about thirties before uh, the the wizard passed, and and he inherited the tower from him and everything. And he always said he basically just was kind of like one part handyman, one part you know entertainer. Uh, although. Uh, you know, as as they say in all the lore books, that like whatever realm you're from, you kind of carry some of that essence with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has this like shadowy death aura about him, even though he doesn't doesn't do anything wrong. He doesn't pick on anybody. He's just a kindly old man at this point, <laughs> and um, so people kind of stay away from him. But at the same time, no one like. No one like throws him to the ground or burns up his shop or anything like that. He's just they give him his space, but they also give him uh, some respect. So he uh, he understands the situation and he's actually surprised at how well he's treated. Uh, now, Matt, Matt, I feel like you're describing the neighbor in Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. He's the neighbor from Home Alone. <laughs> like um, yeah. So so now that uh, you know now that. Uh, Marathi has decided to sack the city. Uh, it's now he's now he has that 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 burning desire to rise up uh, and, and take back his city. She has liberated that city. Just to clarify, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna punch her right in the mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dave, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your character? Because yours is a bit of a unique situation. Because technically, by the traditional lore as we have it right now from Broken Realms of Marathi, you would a you should be an ally of of Marathi and uh, the daughters of Cain, but Ah uh, nonsense. But yeah, you're not. So uh my character is Carrick Deepblade. He's uh an Achillean emissary uh of the Ideneth Deepkin. 
Uh, and it just so happens that the enclave he is from is, is the Morphon enclave. And uh, after the um, uh, Necroquake and, and Nagash discovering these uh, interlopers in his realm, uh, his, um, his family uh, started to uh, work their way into other realms, and uh, they are attempting to um, set up a, a city uh, near the uh, little town of, of Andilgard. Little, uh, little uh, town, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're trying to uh, establish a foothold in the Searing Sea, uh, and so he was sent as an emissary to the, uh, the good people of Andilgard, and um, so... Uh, he sort of got caught up in this very inadvertently and in, in that he happened to be in town when these witch elves were um, performing their shenanigans. As, uh, as well as the Darkling Covens, much to uh, uh, Matt's character's uh, chagrin. <laughs> uh, He's not a fan. And, uh, and um, just by, by virtue of his uh, desire to um, help the people of the city it, with the hopeful return of help for the people of his city. Um, he's uh, fighting back against these uh, terrible interlopers. Yeah, uh, I guess if you want to, my mental uh, fix of this too was your character has been so busy uh, being being a really good emissary and you know talking to everyone within that city and getting used to the military structure and, and all the nobles and all that, that you've literally managed to through whether it's like slapstick comedy or just, just bad luck missed every sort of missive and clue that uh, your enclave tried to give you about like, Hey, you need to be on this side. You're on the wrong side right now. We know you don't realize that, which I think is going to be fun because that gives me a lot as a, as a, as a GM to kind of, uh, play with your character's emotions later well and and the the more fun are are uh generally not highly communicative mm. they're uh they're not the uh the ones who are really pushing the envelope for communications it's right. uh uh so that that plays into it as well but uh uh gm do what you will with that yes uh a 40 minute benny hill scene of a little <laughs> note trying to get to you that's just failing miserably before all this kicks off. But no, that's just right. yakety sax playing in the background. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to. Like I said, I have kind of like a hook for Matt. And I have a hook for uh, for you, Dave, with your character, something to kind of play with. I'm still trying to search one out for Neil. I have some ideas, but they always. But Neil, you're going to describe your character and 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 the race, uh, obviously. But that race, I can only kind of think of doing something silly with because of. Like I think of the silliness. Don't take like, us seriously, huh, Chuck? I see how it is. Uh, not yet. Not not with um, not with Calibran as a temple that I can play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I suffered that once. I know. Anyway, please t tell us tell us about your character. Well, I will read my my character's background here. Uh, we'll see if I can make it through my terrible punctuation, as, as Dave well knows. <laughs> um, so my my character's name is Grumdrinson Forgeheart. Also goes by Grumdrin or just plain Grum. Um, he is an engine master and member of the Barrack Urbaz Engineers Guild. Grumdrin was most recently stationed aboard the Hammerhall Harlot, which is actually uh, one of my my ironclad that's nice. uh, floating above my table right now. Um, it's an ironclad warship at the head of an entire Caradron fleet known as the Barrack Urbaz Flying Circus. Uh, since the events of the Necroquake. The Barrack Urbaz Guild in Hammerhall has fallen on troubled times as the Aether Gold deposits, once relied upon, have shifted and cases been dispersed. Desperation has forced many of his guild to leave Hammerhall in search of any means to return their guild to its former glory. Grumdrin is always on the lookout for new technologies and sources of power that can further fuel his Aether craft. Creation of a powerful new technology is always marketable to the other Caradron guilds and could be just the thing to tip the scales back in Barrack Urbaz's favor. Uh, one of the uh, more characterful things, and, and I actually rolled this um, as I was creating the character, was uh, he, he tends to sing. Or, or whistle while he is uh, in any type of stress, whether he's working or whether he's fighting. So um, my character uh, tends to sing uh, sea shanties yes. uh, when, when he's fighting. So uh, uh, his, 
His favorite <laughs> shanties right now uh, saying are, What shall we do with a drunken Dwarden? Or yo ho ho and a bottle of bugmans. <laughs> nice. Hey, I mean it's it's meme topical and sea shanties are just fantastic. So hey, they're in right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, they're they're always in. So, People just don't realize it. So his uh, his Caradron code is uh, article is seek new prospects. Amendment always take what you are owed. And footnote where there's war, there's gold. And so uh, with fight breaking out right now, he's looking for every opportunity um, to further his goals. Perfect. Yeah, it, it, it's a fun little collection. Um, obviously, like a Caradron Overlord, a Ideneth Deepkin, and an Elder Human. Just Battle Mage. <laughs> um, not your traditional party, um, but it's uh, it's fun, and I, I am pretty pleased, too, because I, I did put down the uh, challenge, because uh, I did it for my character uh, in, in the campaign I'm playing in, to make a model of your character. And I know, Dave, you have the models. Matt, I don't think you've had a chance to start yet. You're deep in Lumineth. But, Neil, you went all out magnetization. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and- yeah. <laughs> so I, I I actually realized that I had an extra engine master uh, sitting on the sprue. And so I pulled that him off, and I put him on a much larger base. And uh, I just I kind of built up some scenery around it. We're in the realm of fire. There's there's some around the Anvil Guard. There, it's kind of like junglish terrain, so I have some terrain like that kind of coming up around it he's got a whole cache of supplies behind him he's got sky mines he's got the whole thing so as he starts to improve his engine rig uh, as the character develops i've got things magnetized to where i can take certain parts of the the hammer apart and magnetize other parts onto it i've got the sky mines i can add on to him i've got pistols i've got all sorts of stuff uh laying around so uh, I had a I had a great time building that guy, and I can also pop him off uh, the base and put him on a legal base, or I can put him onto uh, the Hammer Har- Harlot, the uh, the Ironclad as well, so he can float around there. Um, yeah, so there he will. <laughs> he is definitely going to be uh, um, my narrative character, much akin to uh, Chuck's uh, Tay Rathy. So if you if you think about me in, in this Warhammer game, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's going to be pretty synonymous with this guy because he's going to be showing up a lot. I love it. Uh, like I said, I look forward to uh, Matt and Dave, what you guys come up with for your characters. Um, obviously, no rush. Um, don't, 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 don't take Neil's over enthusiasm <laughs> <laughs> to me that you need to get something done now, but I, I think it's just, it's fun. Like I said, with when I built my character and then obviously Vince over in uh, my other campaign built his character, I'm still waiting for the other two to build their characters. It's just fun. And it's kind of yeah. like, like, oh man, it could build like a a, uh, a war cry unit with it or, or maybe like an Underworlds unit with it or something fun. Like, it's just like, I don't know. It gets my narrative juices flowing. And um, yeah. This is the... Uh... This is the first time I've ever done that. I know Chuck's been to like Realms at War, where that kind of thing is is pretty commonplace. Um, you know, I've I've hey, done your, your head Rathy swap. Was yeah, I've I've done you know minor conversions here and there. I've never been much of a conversion guy, just because number one, I'm not good at it. Um, <laughs> this this is my first real four way into it. I've never used green stuff. I don't know how to do any of that that stuff. Um, so, but you know, head swaps, magnetization, you know, things like that, I can do. Um, and I just I, I had so much fun in our first session that I was just like, we're doing this, we're doing it now. So nice. <laughs> the juices were flowing. Well, hopefully, uh, side tangent, Dave and Neil, that you guys get to come to Holy Havoc. I know Matt and I are planning on going. Uh, we're yeah, yeah. I'd like to. Um, so yeah, as soon as I all goes live, definitely let's let's get tickets. But like Matt created a fun character last time, which I killed in one can- in one game, and then he promptly killed me in the next because uh, reasons. Um, <laughs> Worse versus L's, man. That's what happened. <laughs> but yeah, um, look forward to it. Yeah, those yeah, holy, holy havoc, holy wars, and realms at war. Those are the best events if you're trying to create your own custom character, like like I made in Terathi. Um, so Neil, I'm glad that you did it. I'm glad it was out of Soulbound too. It's kind of like it gives me like a little proud moment. Um, but uh, yeah, well, now, now again, don't forget to to pimp the other uh, commonplace. Uh, you know the Nova narrative. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, their claim to fame is is that well, two actually that the they fought a god beast, which was the table. That then the god yeah. beast they killed it, so the guts became the terrain on the table, and then they had yeah. a siege battle with twenty feet of wall, like something ridiculous. Yeah, the Nova, it was an insane amount of wall, yeah. and then next year they increased it. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you're you are right. So so. Holy Havoc and Holy Wars has the best tables I've ever seen. 
for playing for playing games. Realms at War has the best setup for creating a true custom character, and then the Nova narrative is if you want to have an experience like a tournament, not not. <laughs> I'm, I'm wording this. No, it's, it's, it, the best it's, way to do it is it is the closest thing you will ever get to Warhammer as a D and D campaign that's while not, still being on the tabletop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, while still using miniatures. Yeah, yeah. What I meant to say is, or try to imply is that, like, if you go to the Nova narrative, you're playing narrative four days in a row. That is your life. <laughs> it, it's fun. It's it, yeah. You're absolutely right, Matt. Thank you for calling that out too. Um, anyway, back to Soulbound, which is why we're here. So, the main protagonist, obviously, um, much to my pain, but my fun, um, is going to be the Daughters of Cain, going to be chasing down uh, our, our beloved party here. Uh, now, hold on. Did, did you refer to the Daughters as the protagonist? I mean, to me, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I guess to you guys, they're the antagonist. Um, yeah, a little bit, a little, little bit, a little bit. So the Tarathian cult is is obviously. I had them. I, I had her stationed within Anvilgard. Um, yeah, here's here's a fun story. I see people all the time caught up talk talk about playtester <laughs> advantage. Like, oh, they know what books are coming out. They know what units are good, so they build those models. Yeah, whenever I uh, knew Broken Realms and Marathi, when I tested that and realized Anvilgard was falling, I made narrative reasons for Tarathi to go open her temple in Anvilgard. <laughs> uh, so there's your playtester <laughs> advantage for me, guys. <clears throat> narrative playtest advantage. You don't expect it, but now you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so with Terathi's temple being there, uh, that's going to be the main antagonist, I guess, for, <laughs> <laughs> for the uh, for the party and trying to try and hunt you down. At least for now. Uh, I actually took a note while ne you were talking, y'all. Um, I had a really like a sudden burst of like, "Ooh, I know exactly what I'm going to do for uh, the next session." I took and just like typed out some quick notes to remind me. So. Um, we're gonna throw you guys through some loops, and it's gonna be fun. Uh, and we'll, we we may, if if we get start playing regularly, we'll we won't record those sessions. We're not gonna be doing that, um, but we'll probably report here pretty regularly as part of our kind of a universal hobby segment. I think if we get regular again on this mm -hmm. on this campaign. But besides the point, so Tarathi Temple, Dodge Kane are gonna be trying to track track these guys down. Um, they're they're about to go through. Well, they, it was probably worse than actually leaving the city before they realized it, but the, I don't want to tell the story. I want you guys to tell the story, because I knew the story in my head, but watching you guys play with that story I created, and watching you guys flesh it out and kind of, you know, go along where you obviously knew I needed you to go along with, but also just doing what players do and screwing with DM plans whenever you could <laughs> is great. So, uh... <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite moment in that was Matt goes, uh, I'm flying, you're like, they can jump. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the air. Uh, these le these girls don't s don't skip leg day. <laughs> yeah, one amongst the three of you, um, talk about and, and maybe maybe Matt, we'll, we'll let you start out. But like, talk about your characters and your experience through the story, and and, and walk us through the first session essentially, like the the story, your your highlights, maybe your low points. Uh, yeah, I know for me, um, I um, honestly my biggest challenge was was shutting myself up and letting Neil and Dave have <laughs> Neil and Dave having some some time um, because basically, like they said, whenever I made him, uh, you know he he's he cares about everyone around him. So like, anytime he saw a need, he was going towards it so like um you know everything started right away from from go and uh you know i started off by you know recognizing there was something not right about the fog coming in um and, and immediately headed to um the the storm storm tower storm keep, keep. storm keep the the uh you know this the 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 cast the cast house that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, to try and to try and raise some raise some uh, you know uh, alarms there. Uh, however, basically everyone else already already had that idea. Um, before I could make it there, though, you know the attack started, and um, so I was. 
trying to 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 bring as many people with me as I could, but uh, you know, wasn't allowed to do that. So a bunch of people died in the street for no reason. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's some confusion. It, it was like that sneak attack, like it was in the book. So I didn't want it to seem like there's the army over there, just like what's going yeah, on, yeah. and like scared and. Oh no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Yeah, yeah there's so. a lot of a lot of people who died with their last memory <clears throat> being kicked by this old wizard. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 they they distinctly remember hearing the words, they're gonna get you before me. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, oh and, and of course I, I keep forgetting uh I always forget going into it, but then remember and, and then we are good from there. But uh he does have a Griffhound companion. Uh, Lulu Bell, um, who is uh, he, he, Lulu Bell is is um, a uh, a uh, help animal <laughs> on a curve, <laughs> not not bred or trained to do such. Just picked up like uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, one of the one of the fun parts of the backstory that I had was. Uh, there is a uh, knight in Cantor who kind of gives me a little bit of a harder time because he's very wary of things and people from Ulgu and or Shaish. <laughs> and uh, but he was the person that that met me at the uh, at the gate, and uh, you know it was you know even though the 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 relationship had been strained and everything beforehand. Now that things were kind of serious, uh, you know, he, he he was, uh, you know, that was kind of dropped at that moment, uh, which I I immediately stoked back up again by accidentally using uh, his tapestry to bind wounds of the <laughs> of the injured folk. Um, but I don't want to go too far into it. So, uh, Dave, you go next. All right. So uh, the story picked up while I was. Uh, in the stables uh, near the stormkeep, as as an emissary, I'm I'm kept close to the uh, the political center of town, and um, I ran into uh, uh, a a friendly uh, stormcast by the name of Vendarius Stormfire, uh, and I don't know if that came from the the uh, Broken Realms book or if you made that up, Chuck, but it's a great name. Um, and uh, so much, much like Matt, it was a, a moment of uh, this. There's something just not right here. There, there's something going on that shouldn't be. Uh, and and so worked my way up to uh, up to the Stormkeep as well, riding my as yet unnamed eel. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the story is that uh, these uh, his, I guess, order, if you will, or or his enclave. They don't they don't name their um, their mounts until they've been uh, tested in combat. Um, now, is so, that is that actually written, or is that something you came up with? Oh, that's something I came up with because I was asked what the name of my eel was, and first, yeah, yeah, I believed you actually. Uh, I, I went with it. I'm like, hey, okay, I missed that part in the, in the ID, IDK book, but cool. I like no, it. no, that's, <laughs> that's that's my lore. G um, GW, if you're listening, make that canon, please. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it's fantastic because then it it makes a uh, uh, a name that the DM cringes about. So it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so on my way up to the Stormkeep, uh, my my eel was able to uh, make a deposit on on a character running up to the <laughs> to the keep as well. And uh, uh, yeah, just uh, I I I think that the uh, the story, um, Chuck, I think you you did a really great job of working. Uh, sort of within the story that was that was uh, within the outline that was created by the book, uh, the the uh, Broken Realms book, but really making a, a great narrative for us to follow, and it was uh, really seamless. I, I applaud you for it. Thank you. I will take that compliment. Um, and just to give you guys insights, um, as you know, there's two different types of writers: those who plan and the, the planners and the pantsers, I think is what it's called. Those who plan and those who fly by the seat of their pants. I will, I will, I will take a broad brush, get like four sentences down and a few, few bullet points of highlights. 
and that's how I go into every time I've ever DM'd. Um, so I'm glad it worked wow. out for you guys because I'm <laughs> making a lot up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so for my guy, um, Grumdrinson is um, he's down uh, where old fire snout is kept, and there is a, a dwarf he's haggling with. He's trying to get the dwarf to um, to pay for his services. Um, to, to improve this uh, this contraption, uh, Grum- Grumminson, as as you can imagine, people who who fly above all other civilizations tend to look down <laughs> upon other civilizations somewhat. Uh, Grumminson is is not uh, without those uh, prejudices a little bit, especially when it comes to uh, the dispossessed dwarves, which mm-hmm. he, he finds are. Uh, you know, fa- fairly uh, uh, un- uncouth and civilized <laughs> compared to him. Um, so there's Bad a little dwellers. bit of a verbal spat between what was his name again? Guinea Chuck, Guinnison. Uh, Guinea Guinnison. That's <laughs> uh, so good. <laughs> between him, which uh, Guinea Guinnison, he, he says that you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, a light, a light gust of wind would knock over old fire snout, and Guinea Guinnison turns and and just blows a nice fart right onto it and says it's still standing. <laughs> One of my favorite moments of that game. <laughs> I think what it was. Is, what did you? Oh, what did your God. character say first? Something about like, what does it run on? And I think my character asked like, what's it to you? And you, it, you, you said something like pretty bold and like just like haughty, <laughs> and like you just responded with like beer and vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of my old uh some of my old high elfness is coming out in this character a little bit yeah um but I did, uh, uh, I did enjoy the interaction of because it basically boiled down to wow you're a garbage hole do stuff for me <laughs> <laughs> it was it was more of a i will i will you can pay me to enlighten you <laughs> well there's there's some uh there's callback later in the story to to that too that uh, i love the one line you just dropped while also like singing your sea shanty being afraid <laughs> right so um uh, so I start marching my way back uh, out of the out of that area, and that's when the fog's rolling in, and uh, start making my way to the storm keyed as well. Uh, on my way there, I, I, I feel something hit the top of my head. Um, I look <laughs> up and see an eel passing over top, and apparently an eel has shit on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can thank Dave for that. And I, I did um, have so to roll for that. Front, so, I one for the book of Gr- grudges, right it. there. <laughs> Got me right in the God's eye, right? You know, and, uh, <laughs> and to really work that out of there to get that thing to work again. And so, uh, you know, I head over to the the uh, storm keep, and uh, we're we're tending the wounded um, as as they start to come in um, as the battle commences. And at one point, we make our way up pretty high up into the uh, the storm keep. And I'm not really, I can't remember at this point what my uh, uh, what my character said, but uh, as as uh, Marathi comes down and destroys old fire snout. It's yeah. it's it's something derisive to the, to the dispossessed about the construction of the uh, <laughs> the him vehicle. Told him so it was um, <laughs> <laughs> more grumbled under the breath than anything, and uh, and it's at that point um, that we start uh, moving our way. Uh, once once the battle looks like it's going south, uh, there's some storm cast in there that uh, that take us down into the uh, depths of the city to uh, yeah. get us on out of there. And there's reasons for that. I'll let Chuck explain that. I so, said, yeah, the um, the Shadow Queen appeared, took apart old fire snout, uh, and this is the point in the Broken Realms book where um, Marathi, uh, the Harkron insurrectionists, and uh, Dalar Cain have surrounded the city, pretty much have taken the city at this point. They're just sieging the keep. Uh, and the Stormcast realize it's a lost cause. So there's a group of defenders left trying to buy the minutes left of their life, the Stormcast, um, who are also alarmed because they realize that none of their kind of be- are being sent back um, yet for whatever reason. Um, uh, the... Uh, the night encanter uh that i created for the uh story decides to perform an emergency soulbound on, on the group uh promising them rewards from the god king himself if they're able to essentially notify him because whatever magics are being worked and and and, and vice versa or, or, or and, yeah 
missing the word there. Whatever magics are being worked by Marathi and her kind are preventing the Stormcast from coming back up, as far as he can tell. Uh, he doesn't realize it's actually just poison, and they're all going comatose. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he always, he's a night canter, so he always assumes magic. So he takes them down below uh, to give them a kind of a down and dirty uh, soul binding and sent them out through the sewers to try and escape. So, uh, Dave, once you uh, pick it up from uh, from the soul binding and uh, and lead us out of the uh, to the end of this campaign. So as as we're soul bound, he he directs us to to essentially go down this this trap door and and it's going to be clear which direction we have to go and and uh, and we hear a, a scuffle above us as as clearly the uh, the uh, witch elves were hot on our tail. Uh, and and he's able to hold off their attack long enough for us to get a head start. But uh, there we are, hustling our way towards the the exit when we're finally overtaken by the witch elves. And uh, and before we had a chance to uh, fully escape the uh, the exit of the the sewers into the uh, forest area, jungle, um, jungle, hot, hot jungle, forest. Jungle. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, I guess that's wishful thinking with all the snow outside. But <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so there we are. We're attacked by by these witch elves, and um, I I made my first attack, and and my eel uh, ate one of the one of the elves, and and uh, henceforth will be known as Witch Slayer. <laughs> I, I, so I cannot wait. Cannot wait until a random witch elf kills your mount and becomes a minor protagonist to uh, fight you guys, constantly wearing the skin of your old mount. <laughs> I look forward to this. Oof. 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 Bring it, Chuck. Bring it. You know, if, if, if Lulu goes on, uh, uh, when Lulu dies, uh, I'm out of this game. So, <laughs> uh, Lulu, Lulu's got um, plot armor like you wouldn't believe. Don't worry. I want to worry about Lulu, the cute little Griffin pup. Uh... Yes. Yeah. Combat. Combat commenced. Um, uh, Matt, what, what? Give me. Give me your your thoughts on the combat, and maybe let us know the action you performed. What do you think about combat for this game? Well, first, I'd like to go back real quick. Oh, sure. Uh, to the, to the tragedy of the Stormkeep, um, where I had I know it's I had a school. <laughs> yeah. So I'm an old man. I just want to sit. I just I just want to sit. And so Lulu Bell goes and gets my stool, which I've uh, apparently been here a million times before, and and fastened a leather strap for her to bite and drag across the. Across the storm keep with the half mile storm keep floor, <laughs> and uh, and uh, that night in Cantor, I was talking about that didn't like me. Uh, in in petty revenge for his dumb tapestry that saved <laughs> more lives than it would have not otherwise, decided to destroy my stool for no reason. Uh, now we'll give him credit that he did tear off. <laughs> For no reason, but he did tear off the leather strap for Lulu Bell to chew on. So yeah. he likes Lulu Bell. For <laughs> sure. Did he just toss it out the window or something? Yeah, just, yeah over the edge. It's a good thing Lulu Bell didn't jump out after. Him. <laughs> That's why he took the leather now, strap off first. Now I had been trying to establish a precedent that what should be done with stool is it should be dropped on the head of Neil's character. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, um, maybe, maybe we can foresee that down down below a blood wreck Medusa saw this stool coming for her and opened a small portal into the void and it's now floating through the void where another portal might catch it and it might hit Neil's character in the head years down the road or hopefully whenever we get to the gates of Azir the the, the things just too high up and the stool will magically appear <laughs> um, yeah, so combat is uh, is very entertaining uh it's it's pretty quick. It's pretty um, it's pretty much, easy. It's much better for like the minds uh, minds theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this would be very hard. I think this would be very hard to do with miniatures. Yeah. Um, ironically enough, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it has my favorite type of of casting where there's. Uh, I'd have to double check the rules. I'm pretty sure there's no limit to casting, <laughs> from what I can tell. Um. And if there is, I only cast a couple spells anyway. So, yeah. uh, 
but the the whole you know you have to roll you get to roll x number of dice you need x number of successes and you need to roll x or higher in order to get it to count as success it's very interesting um it's a very interesting mechanic just because of all of the other d6 systems have always i don't think any d6 system i know of has really done it that way the uh, the most normal for d6s is, is you know, you still get your dice pool like the the same way where you get a number of dice based on your stat and your skill and you roll that uh but normally it's if you get a six you roll it again uh, and you keep rolling it as long as you get sixes and you add everything up to get a target number um so this is very it is a little different it's a little bit more like the uh a variant of the the kind of the standard world of darkness mm-hmm. with d10 right um but it works great works great um you have uh the ability to uh increase the number of dice but you also have the ability to give yourself modifiers so you can easier you know, more easily reach the uh the higher target numbers needed for successes um yeah i'm loving it so far nice if I could, if I could jump in for a second about it too. Um, so I haven't played a lot of role playing games. The last time I played role playing games, I think I was eleven, and it was just me <laughs> and my brother. All right, so it didn't really count. Um, that was an advanced Dungeons and Dragons second edition. <laughs> so we're talking way back in the, in the in the forever. And so I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons with Dave, which started up maybe what a couple weeks two ago. weeks before we played. Um, yeah, right? so we're, we're, we're all in that, by oh. the way, as well as a few others. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good time. Uh, it's I great. Was, yeah. Able to compare the two before between, like you know, there are times where I don't know what's going on in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> still, <laughs> now we're we're playing it on you know uh, you know over you know the screen and everything, but this is making much more sense to me just in terms of you know how many dice you get. You're just rolling a d6. Um, and it on it feels almost a little bit like I'm playing like actual tabletop Age of Sigmar because it's like, okay, I need a four. Yeah. I can understand that, and I I'm a bear, very small brain. So <laughs> if you tell me I need four more on a D6, it's not about the size. I'm good. It's right? about the smoothness versus the wrinkliness. That's what yeah. she, the <laughs> ribbed for her. That's pleasure. what. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I I I really enjoy the system. I've after playing once, I feel like I have a pretty good handle mm-hmm. on how it's working, and especially from the standpoint of, I lost my character sheet that we made like a month ago, yeah, <laughs> before we played. So I'm literally as we're going through this, trying to f- like just as fast as I can put together this character <laughs> sheet again from things that I remember <laughs> and from like new roles that I'm doing, and so um, just trying to relearn the whole thing as we go I, and. Uh, but yeah, once we got into the combat and I started to figure out exactly how it worked, simple, simple, fun, um, and just easy to kind of imagine what's going on too. I think uh, when we we this this hag queen blocks our way as we, we were about to make it out to the tunnel, uh, Grumjin says something that you know, we're you know we're gonna make quick work of her. You know, hits her, <laughs> pow, <laughs> with that uh, Endrin hammer, uh, knocks her up uh, you know, pretty pretty good, and then she comes back, stabs me a couple times, and Matt's character just uh, just blows her apart with some yep. some magic. You know, she was she was pretty short lived. At one point, uh, I turn around and I use my uh, God's eye. So with, with the range systems, you know, you go by what. what they call it there's like areas uh, zones there's, yeah zone one zone, zone two zone three right. right so um medium would be two zones away or something so my weapons two zones away i roll my dice just like i normally would um looking for whatever and then it hits and so i, I put a hole through the stomach of a witch elf which was yeah you did <laughs> just, I, that was i think that was the moment where like i love this i am making my character tomorrow so. is, is, is that whenever you uh first used metal as well to go again i think it might have been yeah yeah, yeah i think so I yeah I, that I think so i but i i think I, I blew two apart yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, combat in this game is fantastic. Um, it's simple. It's to the point. It's easy to understand and, and keep in your head. Um, but, uh, hey, Dave, why don't you finish up, wrap up the fight for us, and uh, kind of let us know where the uh, campaign left off for everybody. Oh, well, uh, as I recall, uh, we 
we ended up uh, going uh, virtually unscathed, I think. Maybe maybe a couple nicks and scratches, but ultimately uh, we... I got, we, I got beat up pretty bad by that one yeah, attack from that hag. You don't, you don't count. You don't. <laughs> I can only handle a lot of nicks and scratches, all right? <laughs> uh, well, some of us have uh, a great defense... Um, so, so there's that. Uh, Some of us are an old man wearing a bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> he may or may not have forgotten to tie clothes. Yeah, and and incidentally, uh, your, that character needs to tie his bathrobe in future. Ah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> got suspender <laughs> socks on. <laughs> so, so we were able to uh, dispatch the last of the the witch elves that had come our way, and and uh, uh, we we started to. St- step foot in the jungle outside and uh, we will discover what the jungle brings us uh, in our next session. Yeah. Probably skinks. <laughs> You'll be surprised yes. at the help that you will find in this jungle. I will, I will give you that. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess small downside is I don't know exactly what Sigmar's response is. So here's a little insight. I don't know how to deliver you guys to delivering this message because I don't know when Sigmar find out finds out what he's going to do. <laughs> so I can't like I have to wait for the actual lore to get you guys there. So if it, there might be some filler episodes, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> there might be Pikachu. Wait, we're not gonna meet Sigmar next season no. for next session? No, no. Lulu Bell and the ketchup bottle just Episode like three. Yeah. The party has a picnic. <laughs> but yeah, actually um no. good. I, th- I team think building exercise. No, no. What, what's going to happen is Chuck's going to be like, uh, this time it's a flashback episode into uh, Lumen's past. So we're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. So I was not thinking about that, but now that's in my mind to do flashbacks. Oh, shit. So that's your fault. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I love, yeah. <laughs> don't, I love that. Don't forget, I make this shit up as I go along. So anytime you say anything that may be an idea, thank you for Ooh, that. Can idea. Be, that can actually be pretty fun. We, we played like yeah. three uh, Vanguard Hunters going through uh, Ulgu. I, honestly, if, if, yeah. if oh, we yeah. have to do... I mean, that's uh, going way far back. but <laughs> If we have to do like a little... Uh, yeah, yeah, like that's a pretty good idea, uh, and we do. It, I, we I do think. It for each I character. think what we need to do. <laughs> no, what we need to do is is do an episode, do a couple episodes like Muppet Babies, where it's like, <laughs> oh, there God. we are in the nursery, like you know, this tall, and and we're going on the miniature nursery. adventures to like find the cookies that, uh, and stuff. Hell yeah. Chuck has to uh, adjust his uh, his camera so it's just viewing his ankles. That's right, the <laughs> yeah. green and white striped socks. Hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, nanny. <laughs> I get Nanny in here. Um, yeah, I, I think actually we should plan. Maybe we should do uh, do our session this weekend if we're all game. We'll uh, we'll plan off air so people don't have to get bored of us planning away. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, oh no, I think cashing out our calendars is <laughs> great entertainment. <laughs> been, it is content, and free content is content. Um, content does not necessarily equal entertaining. That's true. I said content. I didn't say quality content. Um. But yeah, uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the first session. I, I, like I said, I took down some quick notes. I have some ideas for the next one already now. So that's why I'm like, we, we should play. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a, a good place to leave it here for today. Uh, a little bit of a shorter episode, but that's because the next episode is going to talk about Daughters of Cain and possibly Sinesh. And I say that because I will spend three hours talking about Daughters of Cain, whether these guys like it or not. And then he'll take a breath. <laughs> yes. And we'll see if we want to do Slanesh or push it to the next one. Um, like I said, lots of reviews out there. We'll have our own take on the review. Um, so there's no need to rush it. Um, and I was talking to a friend of the show and good friend Martin Orlando uh, earlier. He's like, yeah, there's no need to rush. And it's like, yeah, Daughters of Cain is all I talk about anyway. So I don't need to talk about it first. I, I'm just going to talk about it forever anyway. So who cares if I'm first or not? <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah like, it'll be a deep dive for sure. Oh, it's gotta be so deep, especially on that one page. <laughs> I should count and, the word. and for people who uh, who aren't into Daughters of Cain, just think we already got the Marathi book. Now we got another battle tome. I think we're good for another edition and a half. That's. <laughs> I mean, that's maybe. Not, 
That's the, no, no. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm, They're getting the corn treatment right now. Just, just one right after another, after another. <laughs> no, see, I, we're <laughs> so looking. Uh, I had a, had a fun little night. So after everything leaked early, um, I got on. A, I got on a fun call with a, with a, a, a few friends, uh, and we had a we had like a three and a half hour, maybe four hour private podcast essentially just <laughs> talking about the new stuff and like there were some hot takes flying but like Dodgers Kane it's an absolute win it's probably a little cheap so if you're a Dodgers Kane player enjoy our points right now because we're probably going to go up a little bit um, <laughs> if you're a Slanesh player wait for your points to drop <laughs> <laughs> um, you got some stunning models though holy crap but it, like I said I yeah, but uh, points points might be a little bit high on that one, but uh, we'll see. That that's an easy fix down the line for for the developers yeah. and everything. I guess you might be right, Neil. So this could be the daughter of Kane. Then three months from now, we can might we could probably get the sons of Kane, and then three months after that, we might get the Kane and Neth. And <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the Nieces sons of Kane only last. Kane. Uh, Oh, once the, once they procreate, they're they're immediately destroyed. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the battle tome is 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 written off. You get one <laughs> it's game. It's squatted. You get one game. Yeah. <laughs> See now that now that Chuck is he's he's clearly got the ear of GW. He's going to be pushing that every three months there needs to be a new Daughters of Cain book. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, you got to live in the glory that you have now and hold on to it for as long as possible. You don't want anything that maybe in the book that brings you great joy to be left behind because because <laughs> no i i, I think Actually, it's going to be that so here's the, there's going to be this this is okay I, I know we're beating around the bush this is come this episode's going to come out uh on friday the 19th uh so this will be out by then because the book's out saturday and uh so this is how we'll end the show we'll talk about it so i am thrilled um and check my twitter strength hammer underscore or and instagram because i'll put it out there soon um tayrathi has a mention inside of the battle tome not as a character obviously as far as rules go but uh in a little one of the little vignettes the little small stories um so she is an official <laughs> games workshop uh character and as i am thrilled beyond belief i never canon yeah, she's real. She's canon, and she she is wins. now owned by GW. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. should have copyright her. Tell you what. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Oh, well, yeah get, get Any mentions right. you'll you'll be having to pay uh, GW at this point. <laughs> Your cease and desist letter is in, in the mail. mail. <laughs> no, uh, so I'm great. I'm very thankful to uh, uh, a couple people at. Uh, at the games workshop who I know helped make this happen. So I'm very thankful and to them, they know who they are. Thank you very much. I look forward to buying you lots of gin the next time I see you at a real event. Um, <laughs> but here, just, just for fun, uh, I'll, I'll read it uh, as a little bonus here. Cause like I said, this will probably be out by the time this podcast drops. So this is part of the, I guess, general timeline. So this is in the age of chaos. So this would have been the original Terathi, not the Terathi reborn. Um, so a little, little vignette story called Blood Feud. The High Oracle commands Hag Queen Tayrathi of the Kraith to retrieve the Crimson Sinilar and a cursed dagger said to have been tempered in the blood of Cain himself. Tayrathi travels to the caverns of Aok Deep beneath Invidia, where the powerful relic can be found, only to come across the exalted Deathbringer Uktai of the Eight Bloodied and his warband, who also seek the powerful prize. The sweltering jungle caverns echo to the clash of axes and bone-chilling cries of Sisters of Slaughter. Many of Tayrathi's witch elves are hacked apart, but ultimately the Hag Queen triumphs. She draws the Crimson Sinilar from the pool of boiling blood in which it lies, and with it slices open Uktai's throat. Tayrathi's success earns her the cautious regard of the High Oracle. And boy, howdy, am I fucking excited to read that over and over and over <laughs> every single day. Since it was kindly sent to me by... Uh, 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 a few reviewers um, uh, <laughs> Q got the book early I don't have the book early um, even though I play tested it um, <laughs> but yeah uh, the, the things that I guess I like about that so much is one if you've seen the the uh, 
leaks, you know that Kraith has changed, which is the temple I play. I'm the only one that plays a temple. Um, I'm happy <laughs> to have uh, been a part to make Kraith great again. Um, <laughs> so, But Kraith is a Sisters Oof. of Slaughter temple. Um, uh, so Sisters of Slaughter get to fight twice on a 5+, plus, as opposed to the army-wide get to attack twice on a 6+. plus. Um, now, everyone knows me. I have over 200... I have 250 witch elves. So, whoever wrote that story i don't know i don't know who wrote it exactly i i, I will say that um, and and but clearly i think you at least understand who i am what i've done with my army and you've probably actually read some of my lores because you understand i have a ton of witch elves so you, you kind of gave me a reason to write off witch elves because they were slain in this battle but the sisters of slaughter were there so i get to go collect more sisters of slaughter which i'm, I'm not unhappy about neil you know <laughs> sisters of slaughter which they were able to move six inches, yeah. run six inches, charge mm -hmm. 12 inches, and pile in six inches and take off mm -hmm. a... Yep. Yeah, yeah. The great and clean one it, with grace. It was... <laughs> that, little <seed's, laughs> that little seed is planted in my heart forever uh, with the new rules. Um, yeah, so so they knew that, and also they knew that my character doesn't ha hasn't always had the best relationship with Marathi. So Tirathi has always been kind of like, I kind of know what you're up to, but kind of in the same goal, just... I'm going to sneak it at the... So, yeah, it's kind of like a... I think they at least glanced through my lore, which is exciting to me that someone who's actual <laughs> GW lore writer might have looked at my lore and said, like, okay, I got an idea. I'm like, that makes me happy. But um, Chuck, can I uh, can I try and... Uh, I might I might trigger you with this little bit sure, here. Sure, so go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm, 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 I'm high as can be, um, so you need to knock me down. <laughs> what, what, I, what I took from that story, actually, was a little bit different from what, what you took. What... That confirmed to me, since the Daughters of Cain were after the same thing that Corn was after, is that I am in fact correct that the Daughters of Cain are nothing but a sub-faction of Corn. <laughs> um, again, I, I've, I've said this, uh, uh, Big Marathi is just a bloodthirster, just an exalted bloodthirster. <laughs> She's not a god. She's under Corn's thumb. Um, all the power that she has is given from corn as it's taken from blood, and blood is corn's domain. So there it is, Chuck. I mean, the daughters may have, uh, you know, triumphed in this, but who really triumphs? Me. Corn triumphs. No, me. Always. <laughs> I triumph. Oh. Always. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could have that because, uh, yes, uh, daughters of Cain out corn corn every day of the week right now. As far as you go. <laughs> there was a. a I think about a week ago, I pulled out corn to play against uh, friend Alex's uh, Skaven, and he brought the weakest Skaven list he could. And oh, I brought God, the yeah. I brought my hardest corn list I could, and I lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just like, oh yeah, my! There. Like I was like, like I remember just, I went Ooh. to the chat after the game. I was like, guys, corn sucks. <laughs> you 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 have to. Um... I don't know. You're gonna be playing, you know, that that classic 4D chess. Play corn well. I, <laughs> yeah, my, I, I, I will again, this. I, I, I can barely bang two rocks together, much less uh, keep everybody within 12 inches or eight inches or whatever. <laughs> all the different bubbles. Are no, the, the, I'm, I'm sure you can do well with corn. It's it's not my play style. So I, I'm like uh, you, Neil. Like I want to just buff and mm -hmm. run forward. That's what I think corn is. But that's what the daughters of Cain is. So I'm happy. B.S. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I hope you all enjoyed the blood feud. Uh, I'm thrilled that Tirathi is officially canon now. Um, yes, yeah, cease and desist is in the mail. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, uh, I hope everyone has. Uh, a, don't worry, if it's coming from the uh, distribution warehouse, you have like four to eight weeks. So that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, here, so here's the thing. It's really interesting. I ordered the limited edition battle tome and the dice from GW's website. They said it'll be at your house in 20 days. I'm like, cool. Then I went to my local local game store, Norm, uh, at Toy Soldier Gallery and said, hey, can you order me in the regular Battle Tome, the dice, and the endless spells, and the Slanesh Battle Tome? So I'll have... <laughs> I'm getting this, and I'm also going to buy the digital the day it comes out. <laughs> I'm getting this. This will be in my hands. I will get a, I will get it framed. It'll be on the wall downstairs somewhere, probably in my trophy case, on, if awesome. I'm honest. Oh, for sure. So those dice, those dice are just straight red, right? I think they might be speckled a little bit, like a little bit of a darker red in it. They're mostly I think, red, though. Uh, was, I, was, I looked at it, I was like, kind of just done a little something. Like, I don't know what, but something. Well, Cause like, <laughs> it, like, we had our fun dice already. Yeah. Uh, this is like the more standardized dice. I probably won't yeah, yeah. use them too often. 
Because little have, baby hands. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, do you have to do you have to get out your oval teen secret decoder to figure out what the number rolled on <laughs> no, the dice no, no, is? No. Or they're they're just, just, the these are actually great. <laughs> yeah, these are great for that. Six symbols on a six. That's okay. it. But like the dice are bigger, right, okay. and if I'm playing Sisters of Slaughter uh, or Witch Elves, I need to hold a lot of dice. So I have to go with the smaller <laughs> dice for chess X. But uh, I'll have a few for like Kraith rolls and all that fun stuff. Priority. You know, the ones that I microwave and roll sixes with. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. I, well, I, fives <laughs> or sixes, right? I mean. <laughs> so if you're listening to this on the day of release, I hope you enjoy the preview that's coming out tomorrow. I hope you enjoy the Daughters of Cain and Slanesh release that's happening tomorrow um, and everything. Um, why don't we go around? Matt, is there any, any place anyone can find you? How can we get a hold of you? No, I can't. Okay. Just, uh, just tweet me at strength. <laughs> Hammer underscore hashtag hey Matt <laughs> or or comment or comment on Big M's Power Hour. Um, Dave, where can we find you? Uh, on Twitter at uh, Night of the Dave. Keep <laughs> it that on Twitter. <laughs> Neil, where can we find you? And the uh, you can uh, you can find me at, at Brush for Hire. Just send me anything you need commission painted and uh, <laughs> cheap and prices. We'll take care of that real quick. Because low as you want, All right. low as you want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can find me at strengthhammer.net, strengthhammer underscore on Instagram and Twitter. As always, happy hobbying and stay stormcast strong, everybody. <laughs>